else I'm gonna say, else I'm gonna say. Hey everybody, our house 21 here, and this is a quick one. So I, as many of you know, I'm getting ready to get dizzy out for some 100 mile an hour attempts using this monstrous Castle 1717 motor here. The problem with putting one of these in is that it is so large that it just doesn't really fit within uh, the confines um, or the space that's allotted by the stock slash LCG. So there's a couple of options out there. There's one where you can you get a top mount kit. Unfortunately, the top mount kit will interfere with my, um, you know, with my uh, suspension brace here as my boys make all sorts of crazy noise next door. So I found this kit on eBay, which is really slick and it's really, you know, it's very simple, but it does everything you need to do. Now this kit includes everything you need. So you've got a new motor mount plate, which is here, which repositions the motor. Uh, they see it moves the actual position of the motor up a little bit so that the 1710 will align with uh, the stock gears, but also has this nice little adapter plate here. So this guy drops right in place, just like that. Use the one handed maneuvering. So this goes here. And now this piece can go right in the stock location, just like that. And now you includes all the hardware you need. So, so the bolt that will connect here will hold this all together so it'll be nice and secure and give you plenty of clearance to run this bad boy inside in the stock motor location. Now there's one downside or one other thing about this because this motor and you'll see I've got a list of well, different size motors here. This is the size that originally was in that that's the standard 550 size. This is what I was running for. This is, uh, as you saw from my last video, this is a counterfeit, but still is mechanically the same size, but a 15, 12 size motor that still fit in stock location with a little maneuvering for the ESC. But this guy is significantly longer, as you can see. So I'm also going to need to reposition where the ESC sits. And as a result, reposition where the battery, I'm sorry, where the, where the receiver box sits. Now I've seen many guys do this where you, apparently you can relocate the receiver box up here. I'm hoping that this doesn't interfere with my uh, motor mount, I'm sorry, with my uh, chassis reinforcement though. Um, and then uh, I can move the ESC. Now, worst case scenario, I could probably squeeze the ESC under here and then leave the receiver box where it is. So. I have a little bit of maneuvering to do to try to figure out exactly how I'm going to wire up all this stuff. But the good news is that it will fit. So, yeah, that's, that's a, that is pleasant and happy news right there. So I'll jump back in once I get this all together so you can see what the end result looks like. All right, guys, so here is the finished result. So you see I've got the motor rod plate is in here. And this was a little bit of a... Um, this was a little bit of an effort getting this to fit through. Because if you look right here, you can kind of see it. Let me see if I can grab a light to make that more visible. But down in that little area there, the top of that support, let me see if I can indirect light it. Okay, well, the top of that support was actually contacting where the gear has to go through. So I had to clearance that a little bit with my a little grinder. Uh, but once I did that, um, that 25 tooth a Mot 1 gear fits right in there. Everything's been greased. And as you can see, it everything fits pretty well. So what I have to do up here is actually make a custom motor mount plate. So same as I've done before, where I've simply used a piece of plastic and cut down in here using the mounting holes. Uh, so I use another piece of uh, plastic, actually came from an old DVD no DVD case and cut it to fit use the um, one of the edges to make a little bit of a support there and as you see the ESC is actually sitting crossways in here where motor leads are coming through here and I have to do this because I kind of ran out of room but the motor leads come through this side 
battery leads come up through this side so once everything's in it's going to sit nice and a uh, nice and be a nice snug fit so there's not going to be a, i mean there's wires zooming around but there's not an excess amount of wires so i think it's going to be a pretty clean configuration when it's all said and done so oh and also to hold this up i just used a little bit of foam like some of this underneath the plastic plate to fill in that gap so that there was enough room on top for the double-sided vel well for the velcro to sit now i use industrial strength velcro it holds really great it seems to work really well for me um you can use servo tape or you know double-sided tape where you want to do to secure things up and um you know permanently i just like the flexibility of being able to get up and move things around so so but doing it this way actually let me keep my receiver in the stock position um the center of gravity actually isn't too bad so it's about where i need to be so i think that the overall um i'm hoping that the overall balance of the car is pretty well uh, pretty well balanced and that the car is pretty neutral um unfortunately just because of the time constraints today i didn't get out to do any testing with everything like i said it's pretty well balanced left to right it's pretty the cg is in a good location so i think it's going to perform fairly well and oh and i had a comment from dan p asking or basically commenting about the fact that i may have to go to a larger um i might have to go to a larger pinion in order to get to my speed goals gear ratios are just that they're ratios and they're the, the relationship between what your pinion and your spur are so it all depends upon what a final ratio that you need is in order to get you the speed range that you're looking for now i notice a lot of guys in the speed runs are really really over geared and the problem with that and i'm going to do a video about this later explaining the math but in short horsepower or power is a product of rpms and torque so the more if you're trying to get a certain amount of power out of a motor and you're over geared you're actually driving the motor to lower rpms which means you need to produce a lot more torque in order to make that power that you need and the way that motors make torque is by using current so if you gear your motor so that you're running in really low rpms you're actually forcing your ESC to push a lot of current. And especially with the capsule ESCs, they're built in to have, or they're programmed to limit the current to protect itself. So if you force yourself to run in a lower RPM, high current situation, you're going to artificially limit your top speed because you're gonna run out of current before you're actually, before you've reached your maximum power. So one way to try to sneak past this is by actually running at higher RPMs in your motor. And so I mean, you've probably seen all the videos where guys are commenting that I hit top speed and that was only at a quarter trigger, or only at a half a trigger or a third trigger. With these brushless motor systems, these are actually what they call synchronous motors, which means that there's a set of coils inside the motor that has uh, that sync uh, that moves in a synchronized fashion with the rotor that's actually turning your uh, turning your output shaft. So a better way of saying it is that the magnetic field that's created by the coils is synchronized with the rotor, which has permanent magnets aligned inside of it. So as the as the magnetic field that the ESC is producing changes, it causes the rotor to move one click. And that's why you, when you turn a brushless motor, you feel it go chunk, 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 because the magnetic field of the rotor is lining up with the leftover magnetic field that's inside of the coils when it's sitting at a rest position. So every time the motor turns, it physically has to be commanded to do chunk, 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 chunk. So the ESC is telling it is directing it to turn at a certain speed so if you are only doing a quarter trigger or half a trigger or some fraction of your trigger you are only commanding your ESC to go to a small fraction of the available RPMs that are that your motor can produce that means 
that if you, if you still need to pull a buttload of power for a top speed run out of your motor, you're having to push a tremendous amount of current through these wires and through the coils and everything, and that's going to cause your motors to heat up a lot, and it's going to cause a lot of wear. So the better way of doing it, or at least theoretically the better way of doing it, is to step down to smaller gears so that you actually run the motor at a higher RPM. And electric motors love to run at high RPMs. So if you run it at a higher RPM, you have to make less torque, or I should say, yeah, if you run at a higher RPM, you need less current and less torque in order to produce the same amount of power. So if I run at twice the RPM, so instead of pulling, instead of going at half trigger, I go to full trigger, I'm running, okay, I said that backwards. So if I'm running at, yeah, well, I'll say it like that. If I'm running at half the RPM, so I'm only pulling half trigger, I'm having to produce twice as much torque to reduce a given amount of power. But if I go full trigger, so I use all the available RPM, I can now make that same amount of power, but by using half the amount of torque or demanding half the amount of torque from the battery and from the power system. That means less current, that means less heat, that means less damage to your system. That's part of the reason why the X01s use this mammoth motor because they're using larger magnets and larger coils to produce bigger magnetic fields so it can create more torque. And all, so it's using less current to make that torque but then it's also running up at full RPM, which is why an X01 only has a 34 to pinion and like a 52 spur in order to achieve its over 100 mile an hour speed. So if X01 is doing it with 34 pinion and 50 something to spur, you know, with this big crazy torquey motor, you know, then you know, when you're trying to run with the small, when motors are smaller than this, like the uh, the 1515 of uh, 2200 kV motors, which actually make less torque, if you're over gearing it to to try to run it at even lower RPM, you're actually asking that motor to make more torque than this thing is making. You know, which they can do, but you're pushing a whole lot of current through. So you're, and that's part of the reason why so many guys are blowing ESCs all the time. So the proof is in the pudding. I can say all the theory, but until I actually get this car over 100 miles an hour, that's, it's just that theory. So we'll stand by. We'll see what this car does. I'm testing this theory out. If Dizzy comes through and, you know, crushes 100 miles an hour, then we'll know I'm going to some. If it doesn't, then I got to go back to the drawing board. But either way, I'm having fun with it. So all you guys, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Our House 21 signing out. Remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. Hopefully, I'm not going to be doing too much breaking tomorrow. But we'll see. We have all the videos posted. And we're going to have some fun. All right, guys. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Like I said, check me out on Facebook, Instagram, all the other social media uh, avenues out there. And remember to have fun with this stuff. And don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and break some stuff. All right, our house only one signing out, please.